Okay, the origins of the Darbuka. Now, the Darbuka's origins, some say, would stretch back all the way to the Babylonian period. What? 3,000 years ago. I would argue that uh, it's not necessarily the same instrument that has stretched all the way back to the Babylonian period. And I would, I would say that it's very likely that, yes, the Babylonians did have some kind of goblet drum which they used for their celebrations, for their weddings, for their music and whatnot. But it has manifested itself into different forms around the world today. For example, let's just look within Africa. Within Africa, you have two goblet drums. You have the North African Darbuka and you have the Central African Djembe. There's actually more goblet drums in Africa, but those are the two main ones, right? So you have the North African Darbuka and you have the Central African Djembe. Now, it's likely that these two are both descendants of the same drum, the same goblet drum that they had in the Babylonian period. Um, but it's manifested itself into different forms. And the reason for that is is beautiful, really, is because all of these different cultures, they have their own, they have their own percussion, they have their own instruments, they have their own, um, their, their, their own drums that they use for their music and their weddings and their whatnot. Okay, so the Darbuka arguably been around since the Babylonian period. Nowadays, it's embedded into... Arab culture. It's embedded into their culture, into their heritage. If you go to Arabia, if you go to Egypt, if you go to an Arab country, uh, the Arab countries are defined by the countries within the Arab League, um, so it includes North Africa. Um, If you go to one of these countries, you will find, you will find that they use the Darbuka for many parts of their, their societal life. You know, in, 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 in Egypt, for example, they have these big processions where they take the husband and the, the, the groom and the bride and they take them to, you know, the wedding hall, they take them back to the house, they take them to all sorts of places and they'll be, they'll be like a procession of people and they'll all have their own big drum. They'll have the tabal baladi, they'll have the daf, they'll have a bandir, they'll have a darbuka and they'll all be walking and they'll all be playing this rhythm and making a really loud sound, you know, like a nightclub kind of sound, very loud, bassy sound. And, uh, and it's really beautiful. It's embedded into their heritage, into their culture. And so the Darbuka has manifested itself into that form. Not only that, the Darbuka is used on almost all of Arabic music. Um, in all of Arabic music, especially kind of modern songs and even traditional songs, you'll find a Darbuka. It works really well. It's a very, very beautiful, beautiful drum.